and, and I may be butchering it, but uh, you know, entrepreneurs rely on collateral in their house. The house prices go down. Uh, there's going to be less collateral, and there'll be more reliance upon crowdfunding. Pretty straightforward model. Kickstarter data. They brought in a lot of data also at the CBSA level. Uh, and I think the most interesting slide that, 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 that Mr. Kim had was, was actually showing that the technology was less likely, or was more likely to come from the hinterland, from, from the, the, the untraditional regions, the venture capital. That descriptive statistic actually is one of the most important results, which he, which he underplayed. Uh, but it's indicative that indeed there might be some democratization. I realize Christian's results may, may go the other way, but it, this, the jury is still out. But this is this is encouraging, and, and it, 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 it behooves us to go look to go look uh, more deeply at these things. Uh, so, what were the results? Uh, the instrument is basically a, an attempt to get at causality, uh, and I think it's a reasonable in instrument. Uh, the the campaigns and funding do seem to go up with falling housing prices. They're more likely in the high income areas. So, indeed, it is the the entrepreneur with the iPhone is more likely to take advantage of this, which is unfortunate. It's more likely for bigger projects, and it's less likely for campaigns with, with local appeal. And as you might expect, bank density is negatively correlated. When there's fewer banks around, you're more likely to go with crowdfunding. Uh, so some suggestions. So my first, my first question to, to think about substantively, why should funding go up if, if prices go down? And this then leads you to ask, you know, I can see this for campaigns. People are going to ask for, for money when they don't have other sources. But the funding is not clear to me. And, and indeed, that's one of my, my, my next quibbles is basically funding and, and, and campaigns, asking versus getting funded, those are two very different phenomena. And I think we should be very careful to think about them separately, theoretically, and also to, to pick out the empirical, empirical results. So that's the, the next suggestion I'd be, make is to elaborate this model. This is very much an empirical paper, but, but what's our model of how the world, the world is working? And then on the empirical models, throw it all together by the end so we have one model we can interpret. There's a lot of models going on, which, which Professor Kim didn't, didn't uh, step you through entirely, but, but there needs to be fewer models and, and, uh, and more complete models. Uh, quibbles, again, looking into the light academics, I do this too. The geographic analysis, there aren't complete data on, on what's going on, so we have to be careful about that. They talk about a word of mouth effect, which Professor Kim didn't, didn't mention. Uh, they, they can go into that in greater detail. And, and finally, we're trying to pick out policy implications here. We're trying to get out causality and do rigorous research. But there's two, you know, lots going on the last four or five years in, in, in the economy here. We've had, had the worst, uh, worst recession since, since the 30s, concurrent with the rise of crowdfunding. Picking these things, teasing them apart, teasing them apart, teasing them apart is, is going to be difficult, so we should be, we should be cautious. On to the next paper, AJ, uh, Christian's and Avi's paper. Uh, very clever, very much, in, and Christian is, is, is a young professor, but very much in, in, in the style of AJ and, and Avi, very clever. So the model here, students go on break, there's a new source of money, lots of cool stuff comes up. And, and it, it, it's a fun, intuitive model. Again, Kickstarter data, you saw the data that they brought in. And indeed, you see that, that, that graph is the thing, I'm, I'm glad he has it in his slides. That graph is quite compelling when you see the spike going up and down. Um, so students who are less able to get conventional financing take advantage of new sources of financing, but only when they have time. And I really do like uh, Christian's point about here's, our, here's some projects which previously uh, have gotten unfunded and which may actually be good projects which are being, which are being lost. Uh, and we're not just taking worse projects at the bottom of the list. Very sharp effects there, uh, driven by uh, the younger unemployed and the older unemployed, and also the 50 to and older uh, category. Uh, bad weather was a nice, a nice twist here. It was a positive interaction. And finally, the, the other implications of his model, engineering breaks in engineering schools lead to engineering projects, breaks in design schools lead to design projects. Uh, so if uh, Gary King's got some great software to visually interpret your three interactions, uh, I would strongly recommend doing that. Uh, and I. Again, bringing Eric von Hippel on in. We should have Eric von Hippel off to this next year. Uh, he loved this story. Uh, and I think the only thing, it, it is a, a young paper, a very, very new paper. Uh, there's a lot of ways to slice this in terms of, of what's our angle, what's the, what's the story that Christian and his co-authors are going to tell. Is this a regional entrepreneurship story? Is it, is it un, unshackling constraints to entrepreneurship? Is it uh, how universities aid society? Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of different angles here. I think I think I like the 
the slack, the slack angle that we're getting new things funded that previously were were, were not uh, getting onto the list. So um, I think it's been a almost two hours now. So we'll go ahead and break for a bit, and then can you get can you get three o'clock? Yeah, three o'clock, Ron, and when it rolls about. Excellent. Thanks. Mm -hmm.